You know, I never really heard that term used uh, as a term for drag racing, like saying 1320 other, until I came here. So I, I don't know if that's just regional, but uh, yeah, it's not a term I've heard other places. I don't like doing things for no reason, which is why working on cars is <laughs> very frustrating because a lot of times you find you do a whole bunch of work and it's for no reason. Well, I, I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago. It wasn't bad, you know, mom and pop got divorced when I was like eight, but we always still had a good relationship there. Uh, always visited dad on, you know, every other weekend. Ever since, like every memory I have of him, I, I just, from childhood is has something to do with cars. It's either working on his cars, he had a body shop for a while, so working on other people's cars. He's gone now, he passed away last year. My earliest memory is like what I wanted to do when I grew up, well I wanted to be a fire pilot, like Top Gun that came out when I was like seven or eight. So uh, everybody wanted to be Maverick. Oh, he thinks it's the coolest shit ever, like he does. and. I mean, I gotta tell him, you know, hey, dude, you know, don't tell people at school, <laughs> you know, like, you know, because he, he knows it's legal too. Like, I just told him, like, look, what we're doing, what I'm doing out there, it's not legal, you know, like, I could go to jail, so don't tell people at school that this is what your dad does. But, like, I hear him talking about it sometimes, and I feel guilty, like, oh, fuck, like, kid's eight years old and he's out here talking about street racing. Like, but, I mean, that's another thing. It's, I don't know, I love it. <laughs> so I'm okay with it. Yeah, if I, I mean, if I'm gonna have to do something every day, it might as well be something I enjoy. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a safe zone for me. Like when I'm out here, you know, just, just wrenching on this thing, it's life's easy, you know? It's whether I'm making any progress or not, I kind of have a feeling I know what I'm doing sometimes. Hey Tom, can you start the car? Start the car for me, please. Right. Here, you're gonna need these. All the way. All the way. Having a very understanding wife helps. She, she knows that uh, she understands what I'm doing is illegal, but she also understands that I love it and I'm probably not going to stop. So I wouldn't say she supports it. Careful, you fall backwards. That's really going to hurt. Just letting you know if you. She doesn't give me shit for it. She, you know, once I've done everything at home, you know, we put the kids to sleep and everybody's fed and then it's time to go race. It's, it's not something that I would take away from my family to go do, but uh, yeah, it's just having a very understanding wife. That drive to the spot where we're gonna race is kind of, you know, you start thinking like, why am I doing this? This is stupid.
No. No, every, ra every race that I went into, like, I felt that I could that I could beat that other car. If I take a race, I, I feel that I can win that race. Like, uh, I, I don't, I've never taken a race that I like, you know, fuck that guy, let's just get it done, you know, like, and just hope that he spins or hope that, you know, something happens to where I win. So one of the rules of street racing is never race for free and never race for fun. It always has to be for something because it's not worth it to get caught for a free race. It's not worth it you know, potentially crashing your car for a couple hundred dollars. That's why whenever we race, it's always for usually $800,000 up there. I mean, I've seen races go up to $70,000 at one point. Um, sky's the limit when it comes to, to money for a street race. Are we even? Why we want to get people on the track because it will save people's lives. And it will also keep Joe Public from getting hurt because somebody's racing down the street. Joe Public's going home after a nice having dinner with the family and he gets hit by a street racer. Somebody might not be coming home. You know what? I don't think I ever had a dream, you know, like become somebody. You just want to go with life. That's all. My name is Erwin. I'm originally from Guatemala. Uh, came to the United States in 1976 when uh, Pan Am was around. Uh, came with a student visa, so decided to stay. It was rough because it was a lot of fighting, a lot of killing they did in Echo Park back in the 80s. Uh, on school, they just teach you the basics, you know, but not to have a long conversation. So, end up in did my junior high, had to go help my mom because I was the only one, you know, she was the only one working. So, I gave up, I gave up school and started working on construction. The boss that we have then, you know, that's how he became a poor guy, by the way. He gave me a 65 Ford Range Hero. Poor guy, what else was I gonna say? You know, I was the, the type of person that, that needed to be active, doing things. So, hyper all the time, you know? You know, when you hang around with the bad people, yes, you're gonna be bad. So you think you're invincible, but nah, it doesn't go that way. You're gonna get caught in something sometime. And I, I end up racing, you know, the car when I was a young kid with no license. You know, you get pulled over. Back then was just a slap on the head and pretty much that was it. By the way, they're filming us right now, how we speak. Who else? Yes, sir. Paisan. Yes, sir. All right. I started building cylinder heads for, you know, uh, local racers, street racers, and then a lot of the more dedicated guys that compete on the racetrack. And eventually, it transitioned to building complete engines, and I find that a little bit more satisfying. But actually, doing cylinder heads alone makes a lot more money. But doing complete engines is more satisfying, not really from a money standpoint, but from from a goal-oriented uh, point of view. Because when you actually finish a race car, and it's your engine, not just the block, but the block and the heads and the intake and everything else came from you. It's more like your handiwork, and there's a lot of pride involved with that. Three races. Yeah, it must have been in uh, 82, 83, 1982, 1983. Through 84 and um, 85, I had that accident. So I can never forget that day. March 18, 1985. And the race was a race or whatever, but you know, with the, you take somebody's life. Downtown LA, it was started to rain, lost control, and um, it was a head-on collusion, and that was it. 
I went to look at the guy and, you know, he was there. So it cost me uh, seven years of my life. I think it was a test to tell the truth because I was living life a little too fast. I mean, I was, I was light wire. So somebody looking over my shoulder, yes, I believe on that. It could have been worse, you know. I could have been the one that died and we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. <laughs> Anything can happen when we yell. You know, you, you think, oh, they gave me three years. No, you never know. You might not even make it out. That's the problem. You know, it's like a gladiator school. It's a difference in a prisoner and a convict. Okay, so convict's the one that lives there. Prisoner is the one that just goes and visit. That's the only difference. Well, where are you? <laughs> I'm a visitor. I hope so.